I want to be a little bit more conversational because what I'm seeing in the commercial division is I'm seeing a lot of great energy. There's a lot of good stuff going on right now. I know Michael's working on some stuff. Claudia's working on a club. I know GT's got a thousand things going on. Juan's got a lot of stuff going on. He's got a big lease that he's trying to sell. So what, what I'm feeling right now in the commercial division is a lot of good energy. And it's, it's great because we started from ground zero and we're building and we're building in any way I can help. You know, please let me know. We have great resources of CoStar and LoopNet and, and anything you need. We have the backing of Roman. Anything we need, he's quick to the draw and will help us out. Anything we need. We're opening a new office in South Beach that should be open within the next couple weeks. Yeah, 15th, so we're shooting for 15th. 15th. Yeah. Hopefully we'll have a grand opening party. And we're looking for other locations in the Windwood area. So uh, I put the challenge out to you guys. If you can find a nice office space in the Windwood Edgewater Design District, there's great money to be made in commercial real estate. You can make some really good money on leasing. So what I wanted to focus on today is, is twofold. I wanted to give you some tips that will help you grow your business. Towards the end of last year and the beginning of this year, I set all kinds of goals and gave you all kinds of tips and advice on, on where to set your business, what to do every day when you wake up in the morning till the afternoon. A lot of cold calling. What we're in, the business that we're in, as everybody knows, is we're in the relationship business. Correct? Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Yeah. We, are, we are in the relationship business. Our commodity happens to be real estate, right? Okay. If you're in retail, you're in the relationship business. If you're in the restaurant industry, the hospitality industry, you're in relationships. You're selling cars, it's relationships. It's all about who you know. Our product just happens to be real estate. So the way we build our relationships, we have many, many methods of, real, of, of, of doing it. So I wanted to start today with LinkedIn. I made mention of this at the end of last year and I wanted to touch on it today. LinkedIn, for those of you who don't know, is the Facebook of business, of commerce. And everybody you can possibly want to do business with is on LinkedIn. You just Google anybody's name and if they're in business, residential, commercial, business brokering, cars, whatever it is, they have a face, they have a LinkedIn account. So what I want to do is with the hand up, did everybody get a hand up? Yes? Oh, sorry. Thank you. So, if you look at the very top, there's a formula that I've used in the past that borrowed from one of the people who I've learned from. P and P equals P squared. Prospecting and presence equals your production. You always need to be prospecting anything you do. And you need the presence. You need the internet presence and you need your physical presence in order to be productive. It's basically sales and marketing, but we're going to not get, you know, we're going we're to sort of hone in on what it is that we do here. Do, would you believe me if I told you that 90% of the business we do is based with people who email? Do you agree with that? Yes. How, many, how many emails do you guys get a day? Just people trying to sell you stuff. Hundred. Hundred. A few hundred. A few hundred. What do you do with them when they come to your inbox? Depends which box it comes in. <laughs> Personal, I look at it. The, the spam one, I go very fast. Right. Delete, 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 delete. Well, could the be, the, could be the greatest deal in the world, but I'll go delete, 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 delete. I, I don't even look at it anymore. It's just so frustrating. However, if I get a phone call from Claudia or a visit from Claudia or, or from Mike or anybody, would I take that call? Would I, would I want to talk to them on the phone? Yeah. So even though somebody sent me an email on what could have been the greatest deal ever, chances are I'm not going to look at it. So what we need to, to understand is 90% of what we do is relationship driven by personal contact. So what we need to do is grow our personal database, our personal contacts, or in business sense, our pipeline. And how do we do that? We need guerrilla warfare. We need to attack it in many, many angles. See, when I started my company 12 years ago, I was a sole operator. I sat at my kitchen table. I had no budget, and I didn't want to spend any money on anything. So I experimented. Do I go out and get a $10,000 website? Do I start sending out business cards everywhere? Is that what I do? Do I do it digitally and hope that I catch something? No, I saved my money, and I started making phone calls. And I got into places like LinkedIn to my Twitter account. But I went out and started meeting people and meeting people and trying to meet as many people as possible in many, many different ways as possible. So we're going to start with LinkedIn. 
How many of you have a LinkedIn account? Can you show me? Okay. By the end of this presentation, everybody's going to have a LinkedIn account. I guarantee it. So we're on LinkedIn here. There's my picture. You set up a profile on it. And anybody, could somebody give me a name of, of somebody? <laughs> <Are you on>? <laughs> <laughs> somebody, that's, uh, somebody that's not here. Well, do you have a LinkedIn account? Okay. A and Z. Yeah. ELA. Okay. Do you have a picture on it? Yes. So there's a lot. No, no, no. Your first name. Yeah. All right, did you? Yeah. No, I don't see it here. I can use one. I don't know. Roger. C H A M A R L E. C H A R L E. C-H-A-R-L-A-N. Any of these here? S do you have C-H-A-R-L-A-N-D? A-R. Sorry. A-R. L-A-N-D. L-A-N-D. It was right there at the top. <laughs> no, no, not this one. There's a picture. There's a picture. Still here? Two of them? Go back one. Okay, right on there. Okay. Yeah. So, here we go. Thank you. So here's Rob. That's a beautiful profile. Nice, nice handsome man. Nice picture. It gives all this personal information. Here's what we're going to look at. One of the things that we're going to study here. I want you to look at the number of contacts he has. Mm. Up there, 500 plus connections on here. And like 700, I think, something like that. But I don't use it. For it. As I, don't, summary, I don't know how to use it. I'll teach you. He has a summary of what he does. See where it says background? Has a summary of what he does. He's got some nice pictures. Has his resume. What he's done. He's done a lot. His skills. And as you see these little pictures of people, those are people who recommended him or who praised the work he does. And lo and behold, see if I was in a different company and I was trying to hijack or stalk or go after the people that you know, if I know a really successful broker and I would put this as rule number one, if there's somebody in the business, this business that you admire, you admire their work, their heavy hitters, I would find them and get them on LinkedIn immediately after you set up your own thing. I would connect with them. They will connect with you. It's a very, very simple thing. They just say, yes, you're in. And lo and behold, what happens is you get all their connections. Not only do you get all their connections, you get people who recommend them. So all I have to do is go over here. Now, Hunt, I, say, I think that's Juan. Nope. And I'll look at these people. And I'll see, I'm assuming they've got to work on your hip. And I'll look to see who's an investor or who's doing acquisitions. Here we go. Vice President of Residential Sales. You know, I'll click on her, see who she is. Or I can just go right here connect and connect with her. So this is the way to build the database. Look at all these different skills that people have recommended me to do. Yeah. You can choose, let's go back. Let's go back. Richard, can I interrupt for one second? Yes. I overheard it. And again, this is meant to be this is meant to be a dialogue. This is not just me spewing information. Go ahead. I, I have to interject this. Yes. I'll get, I'll get on camera. Um, because I do a lot of stuff on LinkedIn. If you're trying to add somebody and they're a little touchy about being added, if you hit connect, it might pop up and it says, how do you know this person? Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a direct connection, it will not let you connect. If you try to get around that and say, oh, I'm their friend, it'll ask you for their personal email address. If you don't have their personal email address, it's not going anywhere. Here's how you work around that. On the iPad version and on the mobile, so iPhone, Android version, that feature isn't there. So if you're trying to add somebody and there's a block, try adding them from either the, the app on the iPhone or the app on the iPad, and, and that's not there. 
interesting. That's great. That happens a lot. I have a, another way too, because the previous company I was with was really, really focused on LinkedIn. See, I love this. I, I love real work. I've had so much training on LinkedIn, it's ridiculous. And like, so one way that he would do it is you could just, if you go into, you click on their profile, and then where is it that you click from there to, to connect? It'll take you to that page where it says, how do you know them? And you can just click colleagues and then just click your own company. So just saying, you know, we we'll work together. And you're not technically lying, just saying, you know, we're both realtors or whatever. And then, um, and then you just write, like, they always say write a more personalized message because it makes it, you're not just a random person trying to friend them. Just say, you yeah. know, I know we're in the same industry, just wanted to reach out and connect. Something just short and sweet, but they say it's better to always say yeah. that because then they're going to. Like that's great. Exactly. That's a great point. That's awesome. So what we're trying to do is we're making connections. I learned something. Building relationships. Yeah. I know you and me both. And again, that's why I wanted to have this impromptu dialogue, town hall sort of atmosphere. So should we, people, should we add, you know, when people ask us if it's another realtor, should we have them? Because we know yes. they come to get that is your, that. that can be your greatest form of yeah. leads. Yeah. Yeah. Greatest form I, of I leads. Never I see brokers. I don't take on too many residential brokers, too many residential agents, because I feel that you know all they're trying to do is poach my people. So yeah, if they're commercial, I, if they're commercial the I do because we all sort of have the same people, but I always try to see who they have that I don't have. So let's just put in George Perez, the builder of George Perez. Just put his name up top. And Second you get all kinds of George Perez. In. Second one. Right there. Oh, no, no, it. it's the wrong one. Right. It's a big one. Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a big one. In Just, like, yeah. For argument's sake, let's assume he's the right George Perez. Yeah. All I'm going to do is come over here and hit connect. How do I know yeah, him? So we've done call. business together. Of course we've done oh, yeah. business together. Oh, yeah. Maybe that or call it or anything. Yeah. All this works. All of this. It's never been done. Yeah. Never been done. All this works. And he now received my invitation. Now he's going to come up with more people who I don't have as connections, of who I can tap into. So what are we doing here? We're building our database. Well, and this, this goes, well, there, there we get that all the time. Every single day, yeah. right? a few it's times. Yeah. It's random people that are maybe in the It's random So what I do, so what I want you to try to focus on is try to come up, everybody what you should do, what you should try to do is come up with a list of 50 people you want to connect to. You don't need a ton. Come up with 50 people you want to connect to and get them on your LinkedIn. And we're gonna to get to the reason why. This is a notebook I carry around, I've probably been carrying around this notebook for almost 10 years. In here I have a list of 100 people. I just write down people. I wanna meet the Rock family because they, all, all, they own all of downtown Miami. I wanna meet this people because they own that. I wanna meet this person because he knows that person. Make a hit list of the top 50 people with whom you wanna make contact. Very important. So what do we do? So we assemble our list of people. I have over 500, I think about 1,000 connections. And I know this is being taped, so what I'm saying is, isn't illegal, and it's, and it's perfectly acceptable. I'll go into other profiles, and I'll see who has, who I need to get in touch with. Now there's another way of searching on here. When I have my people, and if you look at the very top, it says search people, jobs, companies, and more. So I'm gonna type in here the word acquisitions because there are people who work for companies that I've become friends, connections with over time. And they put down their job titles, what it is they do, not where they work. It'll come up where they work, but their job titles. So, so now we're gonna get a list of all the people who I'm already connected with, I've never met before, just I've the little connect, connect, connect. These are all the people that are in acquisitions. So when I have a property, or I have a fee, or I have something I'm trying to either sell or get information or get close to them, these are people that I want to get in touch with. So here I have a nice list. These people are in acquisitions, and I can keep going on and on and on and on. And I have at least 10 pages of people that are in acquisitions. And each of these connections, pardon me, each of these connections, their email address is on there. So now I take their email address, I have a nice spreadsheet, and anytime I have a property, I may hit them up first. Or I might send them an email saying, I have a certain property available for sale, what is it you're looking for? Or what is your current investment criteria? Again, we're in the relationship business. I'm trying to get as many touches as I can to these people. So we start building our people that we're connected with. 
what do we do from this point? We're still in LinkedIn. We haven't done anything more. We haven't bought an expensive website. We haven't paid to get an expensive list. People go out and they'll buy a list of 1,400, uh, you know, 1,400 names. They'll spend a couple thousand dollars on lists. And you know, what are you doing? Well, this didn't cost me anything. LinkedIn is free. I can now get as many people on this as I want to around the world. And so I have all these people. So now what are we going to do? Oh, we are going to get ourselves on other people's news feeds. Because some of these people, they post stories every day. They post comments like Facebook. And you may see some of your names on there. So I may like this, or I may make a comment on that guy's article. So what happens when his news feed comes up? My name comes across his news feed. I'm trying to get on more news feeds. So they see my name eventually, and they don't want to know who I am until one day I make a phone call, and I call them, I say, hi, you know, I've noticed your stuff, and you know, we have similar taste. Is this a property you're interested in? Or can I help you get this? It's a way of building your name, building your reputation, and getting your name out to many people as possible. So again, LinkedIn.com, create a profile. Start connecting with other people. Start liking or commenting on some of their stuff and eventually you know, it, this will continue to grow. You can also request referrals on LinkedIn. So people actually write nice things about you at the bottom. Unfortunately, I have nobody wrote nice things about me yet. Hopefully one of you guys will write something nice about me. But you can take the time. You can take the time if you want to. Let me scroll the bottom so they have. And these are people who post up every single day. And you may find somebody you know, somebody you may want to get close to. And this is a great way. Because when we first started here in week one, people were saying, well, how do I find my buyers? How do I find my sellers? What do I do? Start with LinkedIn. It's free. And here you have a whole host of people who you can work with. So these feeds just keep going on and on. This guy, Scott Brenner, he owns a real estate company. Daryl Mattis is our co-star guy. And then from here, how do you build this even further? You start posting stories. You could see a story in the Wall Street Journal, and it'll have a like on the side where you can put it on Facebook. It also has a well, I don't know if Wall Street Journal anymore has a, has a thing for LinkedIn. So you can get one of these things, one of these stories posted on LinkedIn. And what does that do for you? The person whose news feed you are on are now reading your stories, and your name is getting out there to more and more people, where now you're starting to develop your name as somebody who knows what's going on. You're giving information. If I find something that happened in Brazil before George Perez knew about it, and I sent it to him personally or put on his news feed, he would remember that I got him information. What I always try to do is get information to people before they hear it otherwise. So Claudia asked me, what is my, no, I, I think you're asking, when, when I start my day in the morning, I get up real early, and the first thing I'll do is I will go through papers, I'll go through publications and all kinds of articles, because I want to be the first one that posts an article on news in real estate in South Florida before anybody else reads about it. It may be in the, the Real Deal, it may be in the New York Times, it may be in the Wall Street Journal, it could be in Miami it could be anywhere. I want to be the first person to find it, and I want to be on the news, news feed first. Yes? Can you schedule posts like on Facebook? Uh, no. No, when you post it, you got to post it. You could, you could not post it, but you could choose not to post it until the afternoon if you want to. There are some services. Yeah, I think through other services. Yeah, there are, there are some services can... that we'll get into another time where it will give you a screen of everything. I'll, I'll go over. One day I will show you something that you can, that you can prearrange your post on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. I think you can use other apps that make you schedule it at later okay. times. So it's, but it, it's, so, it's other apps. So here's what I want you to do. We'll be done with LinkedIn. I want you to set up a profile on LinkedIn. Find your first 50 people, connect with them. And through time, I want you to try to get 500 connections. Because if I'm asked to bring somebody on to, if somebody wants me to be a connection, I will look to see how long they've been in business, how many connections they have, and if they're legit, or if they're just trying, some people will just try to sell you stuff. If I see something for a title company, or an insurance company, 
or a residential person that's in another state, I know they're trying to sell me something, I don't want to be bothered with that. So really use this to the best of your ability. And search for certain connections. So take advantage of that. I do sort of the same thing on Facebook and Instagram. And this also goes with newsfeed. What we're trying to do is we're creating a presence. Not just in real estate, but a personal presence. People know Roger for certain things. He may have done other businesses beforehand. Alexandra may have run a really hot club back in the day. <laughs> Still may run a hot club. <laughs> we don't know. So people know you, but they know you for other things. Like as I've said this before, and I'm sorry if I'm beating this to death, I've been a trainer and a coach for probably 20, 25 years. So a lot of people I see on a day-to-day -day basis. They know me for being more than they know me for my real estate business too. So on my Facebook page, does everybody have a professional Facebook page? Yes? I, I do, but I still I use a good. I good. use a personal one though instead Beautiful. of because, Excellent. because it's, the professional one is Well you make a page nothing. usually on your personal page. Right, and then you can alter yeah. between the two. Yeah. And that's what I will do also. Mm -hmm. I will go to my Facebook page and I will post real estate stuff because I know there are people who I'm friends with. And well, I will tag and I will tag people, like if I'm training a group, like I trained a group yesterday, we had about 20 people in there, and I'll tag most of them on Facebook, and what happens from that is, their people start contacting me, or I start getting on their news feed, and now I become familiar with them, and then when I meet them otherwise, it's an easier introduction to meet people if you have a history with somebody they knew. No, see, you're always trying to get a connection with other people. So, when you meet somebody, and if I'm doing cold calling, like every day between 9 and 11, I do cold calling. It's so much easier if I sort of have a connection in with these people. Does that make sense? Yes? Yeah, but I, I really post me on, on Twitter, and then it shows automatically right, on, yeah. the, on the news feed of my Facebook right. page. Right. And, and the profile. Like, yeah, Wall Street Journal. I'll post something on Facebook for the Wall Street Journal, and, you know, it'll end up in everybody's news feed. <laughs> Um, tag as many people as you can and just pay attention to everybody and see if you can get them all on your LinkedIn account or on your Facebook account. Next page, tip number, tip and secret number three. If you have anything to say, I want to interject anything, please, by all means. All right, so this, this to me is the greatest source of leads I've ever, I've ever done. And I've been doing this for a while. And I mentioned this, I think, in two or three presentations ago. Thank you cards and cards. So we already know that we automatically delete emails that we don't want to read. When you get junk mail at home, what do you do with it? Chuck. You already know what it's going to be. You know what it's going to be before you even open it. But if you received this little foldover card, this little envelope, and a handwritten handwritten address and a hand stamp, not a postmark stamp, and a hand stamp. Chances are you're probably open it, right? This is magic. This is magic. I have an 80% callback on these. There are two ways of going about this. The first one is a thank you. Anybody who I talk to on the phone, I send them a handwritten thank you. Thank you for your time. I'll throw in a business card. I can't tell you how many people call me to thank you for my thank you cards. They said, nobody handwrites cards anymore. Thank you. you. I had some guys gave me some business, sent them all thank you cards. They referred new business to me because I sent them thank you cards. Also, when I when a cold call, I'll send them thank you cards for cold calling them or just want to be in touch. My cold calling will be the cards. I'll do 20 to 30 cards every single week and I'll say, this is Richard with Miami Red Square Realty. I have an investor who's interested in buying your property based at blah, blah, blah. If you're interested in talking, you know, please give me a call. I have an 80% callback or acceptance with that. Now, what does a card do as opposed to just a cold call? Because if they don't call me, I'll call them a week later. I'm no longer just a perfect stranger. I now have a connection with these people. Sorry. I now have a connection with these people because I sent them a card. Hi, so-and-so. I sent you a card. Did you get my card? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. really like the card. It was really nice. Yeah, I want to talk to you about your property. He may say, well, I'm not interested in selling the property. Oh, okay. Um, well, they really like the building. If you ever have any change of plans, could you please let me know? Absolutely. By the way, you know, do you have any other properties? 
Yeah, the shopping center in Opelika. Would you be interested in selling? Yeah, yeah, maybe interested in selling it. Well, the phone call's not done yet. Are you interested in buying any more shopping centers? Seems like you like shopping centers. Is there something perhaps you'd like to see? I have a few properties that are not on the market. Would you be interested? Yeah, yeah. Our goal in this, in all of this we do, is to get face to face. There's nothing beats face to face. Correct? They want to see Juan's smiling, happy face. Juan wants to be in front of them as soon as possible. So our goal in the LinkedIn, in the Facebook, in Instagram, in cards, in books, is to set up an appointment. Well, can you send me the information? Well, I'd really rather come by and introduce myself face to face, if that's okay. You have 10 minutes. Yes. Our goal is to have appointments. It's nice sitting in the office, but our job is to be face to face. Damn, sorry. Uh, our job is to be face to face with people. So it's really important that we get in front of people, which takes us to page, the next page, and the final page. And I left it blank for a reason, because I want you to do it a little bit of a little bit of work. And it sort of ties everything together with what we're doing here. So here you see a triangle. And the top, the, the presentation is called presence. Prospecting and presence equals production. So here this triangle basically speaks volumes. So at the very bottom, I want you to write in the bottom third of the triangle. I want you to write in the word digital. The bottom, the very bottom. I want you to write in the word digital. In the middle, I want you to put physical pieces. P-I-E-C-E-S. And at the top, the very top, you can put um, personal visit. You can put visit, personal appointment, face to face. On the left, the left arrow going up, I want you to put the word effective. On the right, with the arrow going down, I want you to put the word cost. There you go, sorry. I want you to put the word cost. Let me get you one more. Does anybody else need? Okay. Digital, at the very bottom of this pyramid. This pyramid will tell you everything you need to know about your presence, your production, your marketing, your sales, sales and marketing. It's what this whole thing is about. Digital, with the arrow going down to the right, is the most expensive of all of your marketing budget. If you're going to budget marketing other than having a big monster party, the digital is everything. $5,000 minimum for a decent website, cards, mailers, Whatever it is you need, if you want somebody to do an SEO for the top names and the top numbers, all that costs a ton of money. And it's sort of the least effective because you really can't quantify what you're getting in return. You don't know the return on your investment, correct? When I first started, I had a simple, a simple website built. It was crap. But in commercial real estate, Nobody really gives a crap about your website. They're not going to search your website. They're calling me because they, they know who I am. If they don't know me, they're calling whoever they have their relationship with. If I met somebody at a party, I will get that phone call. But they're not gonna go to the website and say, well, let's see what he has. Because when I did have a website, I would not put listings on there because I never took listings because I couldn't compete with the big powerhouse brokers, the big CBREs. Uh, Marcus and Milichap. I know if I went to a presentation and they walked in with their team of 10 and a thousand page brochure on why they should have the job and I come in myself with a 10 page brochure, I know good and well who they're going to select and who they're going to feel more comfortable with. So my niche was always, I'm not going to take your list, I'm going to just sell your property. So give me an opportunity, give me 30 days to sell your property and I will sell it. But Marcus has the budget to take and out website you, out SEO you out anything that you can ever do. So our approach, my approach was always a little bit different. I can easily go up to buyers and have a different approach. 
because of what it is that we do. So the digital is the most effect, is the least effective and the most costly. In the middle, right in the middle, Office Depot, Office Max, Target, you can get ones that just say thank you on it, just a typical thank you card and the price of a stamp and your time. Or you can hire an intern, you can hire somebody to sit there and write, bang out 100 cards a week for you and just put them in the mail. Very effective. It is a personal approach, but they must be handwritten. If they're typed, it's just another person that's just trying to, but something happens when you have a handwritten note in the day of digital and the day of prearranged mail. Something, something triggers where it's a little more personal than just, you know, just another piece of junk mail. So, and when you put a card in here, chances are if it's, if it's, if it's a card that's handwritten, they don't throw it away as quickly. They may save it for a little bit of time and they will remember it. And when you call them and they become part of your regular um, calling time, when, when, you're, when you're calling them back and back to see if there's anything they need, they will remember this card. They will not remember a website. They will not remember a marketing package or an offering them. This is what they'll do. It doesn't cost very much. It's very inexpensive, but it's very effective. At the very top, the personal. The personal visits, the personal contact. It's the most effective and the least expensive. It's, it's a very, very simple process, just setting up appointments. That's why we set up the LinkedIn, which is digital at the bottom, even though that doesn't cost anything. But our goal in all this is to set up appointments with people. We want to get in front of people. We are in the relationship business. So when they need something, you know you'll get the phone call and you'll be in the game to try to get whatever it is they need and eventually they'll throw all referrals to you because you're there when they need you. So try to build a name, try to build, try to build up hundreds of names on LinkedIn. Try to get a database of about 50 people who you'd like to get in touch with and stay in touch with and just, just work work everything you'll possibly do, but most importantly, try to set up appointments with people. That's the way to get the job done. So, again, this was meant to be a dialogue, so hit me up with any questions you may have, advice, opinions. Um, yes? So, like, of course, I'm gonna add, like, my colleagues and everybody, but how do, I, like, how do I choose the right people that would effectively connect with me or so? How do you find someone, like, that you would want to with in the list of 50. Oh, great question. In, in this business, when you started, why did you get into this business? Um, because I like doing sales. Okay, good, good. So you like people, you're obviously very good with people. Are there people in this business who you study or who you look at and say, damn, I want to do what they're doing? You ever see anybody like that? A lot. Those are the people. You find out who they are, what they're doing, and you connect with them. I won't name names because we're running on tape, but you know all those high-end people. You want to see what it is that they're doing, and, and they do have a budget for, you know, even if we take, if we just take the gyms, right? Right. They do kill a business. Yeah. You Maybe want them on here. You want them. I mean, we put them on here. You're going to see hundreds of recommendations. And they do a record. They have a professional marketing team. They have their kids in there running the digital portion for them. So you see what they're doing, and then that's who you connect with. And eventually one day, you know, you may have something that they may be interested in, and you just build up. You find out who are those people you admire, you look up to, you'd like to work with. It could be a broker, it could be an agent, it could be a developer, it could be a buyer, and you just set them on there and you just gotta be aggressive. Does that answer your question? Yeah, perfectly. Okay, good. Um yes, I've been in touch with my previous broker was just Reach out to any like any type of professional, doctors, lawyers, anyone else who works on referrals as well. And just in one way of the time, just go on every single day, make ten new connections a day, just write a little personalized note, yeah. explaining yourself who you are, what you do. Once they've connected with you, then write a follow-up. You know, just saying, thank you for connecting. If you'd ever like to meet one on one, and then just invite them. You know, most people are friendly, they're not going to say no. And it's just having the courage to go out and just meet with them and just kind of you know tell them who you are and what you're doing and just build a relationship. So you can tell, tell, can you tell about your background in the last place you worked? Um, well, the last one was an auction-based company, and that was the one who really focused on the, the LinkedIn stuff. But, I mean, the broker before that, even, he was the one who was just, he'd make me go online and just Google random doctors, whereas people that are just, like, some importance, and just reach out to them, find their email address. You can find anyone's email address online if you really want to, without even using LinkedIn. And, it's, I mean, it's scary at first, but if you just kind of force yourself to do it, then you get used to it. You become a hunter. Yeah. You know, I've, always, I've always said that what we do, you know, what I do is I, I hunt people down. 
If there's a property I like, I will hunt them down. If there's somebody I want to meet, they will be hunted down. Now, Brianna comes from a background with, with the auction house. I mean, I'm sure you had, you know, with auctions, you got to do a lot of marketing and a lot of phone calls and a lot of handwriting. It, it, does it work? I mean, if you do it properly, I'm not going to say I put as much time and energy as I should. But you don't have to. You know, everybody, <laughs> yeah. everybody has lives. You yeah. have to really read a balance of lives. What's, like what's the most effective one you use? No, I mean, you LinkedIn, to do it LinkedIn is very, very effective if you mm -hmm. use it properly. And he is, hasn't even gotten into it. Like, it's very, very, you can, you can learn a lot from it. And there's a lot of ways that you wouldn't really realize that when you really dig into it, there's like other ways to contact people and reach out to them that aren't so obvious. But it, you, can, you can do a lot. Of if you go to their, they, I mean, the premium, they, they have, I'm sorry, the premium one, you put in anybody's name and it'll give you everything. You don't even have to connect with them. Yeah. I mean, it'll give you every piece of information. But you have to. But when you're doing this type of work, when you're doing when you're doing this type of work, you must be super organized. You must have spreadsheets of who you're contacting. I mean, even if you just have a spreadsheet, first name, last name, website, phone number, and a little note. And when you have sent them anything, because if you're not organized, if I send out note cards this week and I don't call them back for a month, I'm screwed. You know, the work I did a, a month ago is gone. So you need to be super, super organized. For me, the one that works the best, the thing that I do works the best, it's to post in groups. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Not on like on uh, Facebook, but on LinkedIn, I don't really know. Thank like you, Roger. Yeah, I've heard someone. the groups on LinkedIn are really good, too. The, 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 the one I'm there, the one I'm there, I mean, real estate group in on LinkedIn, they're, they're so annoying yeah. that I don't even want to look at them yeah, because yeah. It's always the same thing. There's, it's always there's groups on here that you can join. Yeah. Just you like, can join all kind of groups, just like Facebook yeah. has. Like yeah. I think I'm on about. It's all kind of. I think I'm on about ten groups, and yeah. he's absolutely right. Thank you. I forgot all about that. You can join groups, commercial real estate investors, uh, whatever group you can think of. It's awesome. And once you get again on those, you see so if you take those people that you're interested in, find out what groups they're on, join those groups, and become part of the dialogue. Your, your presence goes up quite a bit. But if you look at the top of this page where I'm going to try to surf around, you can see that. I had 16 people viewed my, pro, my profile in the last 30 days. 117 people viewed a post. See Gulfstream Park. They're adding a movie theater. Rather than Miami Herald. But because I'm up so early and I read MiamiHerald.com, I posted it on LinkedIn 5 a.m., 4.35 o'clock in the morning. I had 117 views just on that just because Goldstream is going to put in a movie theater. I put it on this. What I'll do is I'll put it on the public. You can post articles to the public. Anybody that goes on LinkedIn can see, or your private investors, I mean your private connections. So I usually do two. I'll do one of the public, and then a day later I'll do just my private people. And when you send, a, when you send an article to somebody in your private, it comes in their email. So when you post it on the public LinkedIn, you'll see it on the feed like all of these, all of these going down. But then when you post it to your private connections, they're going to get it in their email. You want to be in their email inbox. They want to see your name as often as possible. You know, if you can find somebody who's a reporter, see if you can get them to write an article or have or quote you in an article, and then you send out that quote to your people. You're really a PR machine, and you have to operate as a PR does, machine. Does anybody have subscribe to the premium service? I did for a while. Is not it really a reason to if you know how to use it properly. Exactly. Yeah, is it, is it that good? No. I don't think so. I found it very little. Value. Very little. They say value. they open up more investors and more people, and you yeah. can get the email addresses before, you know, before you can connect with them. But as Brianna said, you can get anybody's email address anywhere, anytime. Mm -hmm. so. Another another good way for just trying to search for new connections that would be valuable is use the advanced search option and just put in mm -hmm. specific details like. Like investors, and yeah. zip code within this many miles. And there's a lot of equations. Yeah. There's so many, so many things. If everybody's interested, you know, we can help you out. Um, but I, I would definitely take advantage of this. Uh, does anybody use any other sites that I may not be aware of that I may not have mentioned? Because I'm no expert in this whatsoever. <laughs> anybody use anything helpful? No? Just Facebook. Facebook, yeah. yeah. Instagram. There's a really good course too at the association. If anyone's taken it, it's like a social media course. I think they have a regular one and an advanced one, and they really go over all the just basic social media and how to really <coughs> use them all together. It's with real estate, and it's good. That's great. Does anybody have a Does anybody have a blog site? Does anybody set up a WordPress? Does anybody do any blogging? I've attempted it. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have one that don't use it. I have, I have it all set. Like, like this it's all set up. This is, yeah, it's a lot of work. And again, you have to look at the reward versus the amount of time you spend on it. If you want to spend some, you know, if you want somebody to spend a lot of money in for you and go out and build it up, that would be great. But, you know, again, we're in a face-to-face -face business. Having lunch with somebody, having coffee with somebody, you know, costs you five, ten bucks as opposed to spending thousands of dollars and hours and hours on blogs and websites. Go meet people, become friends with people, join clubs, charity events, go to parties, whatever it is you do, just do it to the best of your ability. I'm an early morning person, so I, have people, I see people all day at nighttime. You can't track me down. Or some of you may be out at nighttime, like Roger, he's out till four or five in the morning, partying every night. Deeply <laughs> <laughs> so, his, so his crew, his way of networking will be a little bit different than mine. Yeah. <laughs>